Okay, the committee is now resumed in public session. You're all very welcome this morning, and I would remind, uh, I'd once more remind all those in attendance to ensure that your mobile phones are on silent or switched off. And before we start a meeting, I wish to explain some limitations to parliamentary privilege and practices of the houses of the Orontes regarding reference you may make to other persons in your evidence. The evidence of witnesses physically present or who give evidence within the parliamentary precincts is protected pursuant to both constitution and, and statute by absolute privilege. This means that you have an absolute defence against any defamation action for anything you say at the meeting. However, you're expected not to abuse this privilege and it's my duty as Cahir Locke to ensure that it's not abused. Therefore, if, you're if your statements are potentially defamatory in relation to an identifiable person or entity, you'll be directed to discontinue your remarks. It's imperative that you comply with such directions. Witnesses remind of the long-standing parliamentary practice that you should not comment on, criticise uh, or make charges against any person or any entity by name or in such a way as to make him or her identifiable or otherwise engage in speech that might be regarded as damaging to the good name or reputation uh, of a person or entity. Therefore, if your statements are potentially defamatory in relation to an identifiable person or entity, you'll be, direct, you'll be directed to discontinue and it's imperative that you comply with that direction. Members are reminded of the provision of Standing Order 218 that the committee shall re refrain from inquiring into the merits of a policy or policies of the government or a minister of the government or the merits of the objective of such policies. Members are also reminded of the long-standing parliamentary practice that they should not comment on, criticise or make charges against the person outside the House or an official leader by name or in such a way as to make him or her identifiable. We are joined to, uh, this morning by the Controller and Auditor General, Mr Seamus McCarthy, who is a permanent witness to the committee. And today we engage with Mr Ryan Turberty and Mr Noel Kelly. Mr Turberty and Mr Kelly have been advised uh, the areas that the committee will focus on. And they are, and I'll list those out, payments to presenters and personnel at RTE, uh, specifically from 2017 to date. Details of Mr Ryan Turberty's contractual relationship with RTE, including related payments and exit fees. The process relating to the tripartite agreement from 2020, including its negotiations and sign-off, the content of that tripartite agreement, and the issue would be an order written by RTE. The raising of associated invoices and related payments, the details of the invoices and who were aware, who was aware of the same. Any instructions given by Mr. Ryan Tuberty to Mr. Noel Kelly, and any further discussions in regard, in that regard, before finalising the agreement. The call on the 7th of May 2020 and the letter that followed from Ms. D. Forbes to Mr. Ryan Tuberty. And then any matters arising from material provided to the committee in advance of the meeting or materials provided by RTE to the committee. I'd like to thank the witnesses for appearing and I welcome the fact that you've attended. There was no, we didn't have to compel you, your attendance voluntarily uh, before this committee to assist in our examinations. And just before I ask Mr. Tuberty for his opening statement, just to mention that the documents have come late. Uh, we were promised them yesterday morning. Uh, we didn't receive them. Uh, some members received them as they were travelling here this morning, uh, and we only had sight of them in the, of them in the last hour. Uh, just, and the other thing I want to set out is that the position of your legal advisor, uh, your legal advisor, you know, just to remind them that the attendance of your legal advisor is with the agreement of the committee. Uh, they're not entitled to contribute or to disrupt, to disrupt the meeting or interfere with the conduct of the meeting in any way. Uh, so, Mr. Tobery, just if we could have your opening statement, please. Of course, Cahir Lock, the deputies, um, good morning to you all. And, and, and first, let me thank you for acceding to my request to, to come before you today. We felt it was really important uh, to be here. Um, I've always believed in the importance of public service. Um, I was brought up that way, and I have great respect for the Oireachtas as an institution. Uh, I've come here, as, as you know, voluntarily because I believe in the work that you as a committee are doing. I don't say that in any other way other than that I want to assist in every way I can. I appreciate that you'll have a lot of questions, so I'm going to try to keep my opening statement as short as possible. Uh, I begin by clearly and unambiguously at the very outset this morning uh, state that, that I'm truly sorry for all of this and for any part which I have played and uh, be it consciously or unconsciously, and anything that has contributed to the debacle that, that we're dealing with today. Uh, I'd like to apologize to the committee that they've had to put, take this time to deal with this matter today, and to my colleagues in RTE, and to my listeners. So, given the events of the last three weeks, there is a lot that I wish to 
uh, say, and there's a lot that I need to say. So please bear with me. My aim today is to help correct.